Hi, Scott Wonder here from Wonder Woods. Welcome to another Wonder Woods video. We are working on this log cabin, the one right behind me, and we are building doors for the new addition. On the right hand side is a master bedroom suite, and on the left hand side is a new family room, both of which do not have doors. We are also doing some doors for the detached garage behind you, and we are doing them in a style similar to the front door which exists on the old log cabin. I'm gonna take you around, show you what we're up to. We got some doors in, a few are being built, some still need to be built, etc. I'm gonna show you around, show you what we're up to, and enjoy this beautiful day. So this is the original door that we're copying, or at least using for inspiration. It has a screen, which we are also making screen doors for all these openings. And then here is the original door. We're building it very similar. It's got the chamfered lines down there. The main difference is we're building out a Sapili, which we're going to finish with a stain and a clear coat. Um, this one's obviously painted, but it's going to be very similar in design. This is the inside of the front door. We're also duplicating everything else on the inside. So not only the door itself, but also the trim details with this flat trim and the little, I'm going to call it an arch, but it's not really an arch little uh, pointy top. Here's one opening we've got done so far. It's got a side light and then the main door. Looks kind of pretty. The peeling looks really nice, I think. This one's almost done. Obviously, you just need some hardware. Here's a good close-up of the doors with a little bit better lighting so you can kind of see how nice they are. They look very pretty, don't they? So we are not doing the beams in this house. But the poor carpenters are having to work with solid wood beams on the ceiling, which is just crazy. These things are super incredibly heavy. This one's okay though. Um, that one up there was home. They've just been working hard to get these beams up there. <laughs> I do not envy them. Throughout the additions, they're putting stone on the walls. And you can see here where the, this is the family room addition where it goes into the original house. You can see the log, the beams right there, the log house right there. It's pretty cool. So this is the garage. They're treating it just like they are the house with stone walls, wood up on the ceiling, and then similar doors. But this set of doors right here, these French doors, are quite big. They're a lot larger than the ones in the house, but they wanted a big opening there. So when they use this garage for uh, more of a community space, they're going to open it up, get the doors open, hang out in here. They want to have big doors that open to the back too. So those are going to be French doors. And we got another door behind you that enters into the garage. So it's a pretty nice space out here too. These are the next doors I need to work on. I was just waiting for glass to come in. We ordered insulated panels for these doors. And while I was waiting for the glass to come in, we came over here and started fitting the doors. So once I put the glass in, which I'm just going to do here on site, uh, then we can just hang the doors up and they're already fit. So we know it fits really nice. So, those are the next ones up. Here I am doing the final fit of the doors before I put the glass in. These are the French doors on the back of the house. And here's what they look like after they are installed and waiting for hardware. We've been working on the doors in the shop and Jeff got the frames done. This frame's for the really big door. I'm in the garage right now for the really big door right there that goes to the side of the garage. And the frame was so big that we couldn't really put it together in the shop, at least in the finishing room, and finish it in the finishing room and get it out because our doors aren't big enough. So I said, okay, let's not worry about that. I'm coming out to the job site around here pretty regularly and I've got this nice big giant garage. Nobody's out here. I can set up right here, be out of the way. Jeff has more room. I'm gonna work on finishing them here. So that's what I'm doing. I'm sanding right now to get things going, get them ready for stain and then getting ready for the finish. <laughs> Using a bare 
urethane stain, special walnut, uh, just an oil-based stain. Wipes on nice, wipes off. I sand it in between coats with 320. If I'm doing a film finish, like this, there's a little plastic coating, plastic resin on top. If I'm doing a film finish, I sand the rough wood to 150, and then sand it between coats with 320. So, that's what exactly what I did here. 150, stain, put a coat of finish on it, and then in between coats, sand it 320. All you're trying to do, assuming that you put the finish down easily, when you sand with the 320, is get the dust nibs off of it. So, it'll feel kind of nibby, just kind of rough. And all you're trying to do is knock those down. And put this coat of finish on, and it'll all lay down real nice and long as the wind's not whipping through here. Here's another close-up of the wood just because it looks so pretty. You can see how nice that sapili looks in the sun, and you can see how the finish looks when it's applied with the roller. The piece on the left shows a little bit of orange peel, but the Prolux finish dries overnight. It dries slow, and when it does, it will dry flat and be really smooth when it's done. Here I'm bringing the doors in from the shop. We stand them up in the shop so we can spray them. We put some plywood on the bottom there you can see the their feet basically so they stand up and we can spray both sides at the same time to fit them i made a template i just took a scrap piece of wood held it up to the door frame and made a template so i knew where to cut the hinges i used a little router template to actually do the mortises for the hinges i've used this one for all the doors and all the different size hinges and just adapted it by putting little spacers in there. It works really nice. You can just run the router in there and get the depth you need. It, of course, leaves rounded corners, which I clean up with a chisel. Um, they do make square chisels uh, for doing inside corners, um, but I never have that with me and always forget it. So I always have a chisel with me, and I don't mind spending a little bit of time cleaning the corners up. It feels really nice when I do that. And a trick I love to show is just using a bigger drill bit, one the size of the hole, to center the next drill bit. It works nice because I never have my self-centering drill bits with me, but I always have a set of regular drill bits. I do the same thing on the door frame to get it ready for accepting the hinges, and then screw it up into place and hope it fits. So it's hitting here just a little bit. Just a skosh of a trim, I think. So there we go. I trimmed the edge of this door just a little bit. So it fit in there nice. I trimmed this at a little bit of a back bevel because if you cut it square and you make a nice gap on this side, as you open it up, it gets really tight and wants to rub right here. So we cut it at a back bevel, about two degrees. I just set on the fast tool, the track saw, just tilt it a little bit to cut a slight angle there so that when it's closing, it doesn't hit. And you can still keep a pretty decent gap there without getting too tight and hitting. There. Just needs weather stripping and some glass doorknobs, concrete below it, basic stuff. Here's a close-up of the gap I was talking about. This is where the door closed. It's back beveled now, so as you open it, you can still see that gap gets a little bit tighter. It stays pretty consistent on the way back. If we didn't cut that back bevel, this door would probably be hitting right there, rubbing, and it wouldn't close.
after getting the small door done over there on that side of the garage, I started working on the big French door set. I have the frame in. I've used the laser to go through and check, make sure it's plumb and level, etc. It's up four inches off the ground because they're getting ready to pour a subfloor in here in the garage. Uh, there's actually a garage underneath here, so it's extra thick, extra strong, so they can park on top. So it's gonna be four inches up from the subfloor. And I'm getting ready to put the doors up, but before I do that, I wanna get the frame set. If you're doing a smaller door, you might put the frame up with the door, set the hinge side, and then go through, after you have it hanging on the hinge side, adjust the rest of the frame to match the door so it fits nice. In this case, the doors are huge, they're hard to work with, and I put the frame up first before I do that. The trick I wanted to show you was that after I've got it all set up, and I think it's in great shape, my final check is to put a string from corner to corner to make sure that there's no twist in these two. Because if this one was back a little bit, that one was out a little bit, for example, when the two doors come together, the French doors come together, it won't line up nice. I could probably adjust it a little bit later, but since they're getting ready to pour the concrete tomorrow, I wanna to get this set as good as I can, make sure it's as close as I can have it before they do that, so hopefully I won't have to move it. So what I wanted to show you was, if you put a string here from corner to corner, they should just touch each other here in the middle. I'm gonna swing the camera around so you can see it, but I put the string right here on both sides, come down here to the corner, it's barely touching that string, and from this side, down to this corner, it's just barely touching. If it was off at all, obviously the two strings wouldn't touch. Here I'm pulling it tight, and you can see that these two strings are touching each other. There's no space in between them. But that doesn't tell you that this isn't pushing that way. So to verify it, undo that corner, put it on the other side, make sure it's not pulling that direction. and give that a pull. Same thing, strings are just touching each other. I put screws on all four corners and these are just wrapped around the screw one time. So that when I pull tight, it's pulling everything tight. I think that's pretty good. The last trick I wanted to show you was how I do the sweep on the bottom of the door and made it longer the longest pieces I could find after a lot of research was 48 inches and the doors are a little bit wider than that. So I talked to a few weather stripping experts and one of the guys that I trusted pretty much told me that they'd take the weather stripping or in this case a door sweep and cut it at a 45 degree angle and then use super glue to put it together. It came out pretty good. And here's those big doors after they're finally up and swinging. You can tell by the change in my clothes in the seasons that I was there for a while. <laughs>